Okay, JD, go. How are you guys doing? <laughs> How are you doing, Shereen? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, um, we put this thing together. I'm actually sitting in my investment right now. Um, and so I uh, just wanted to kind of do a pop-up and just give people a space to ask questions if they wanted to. And um, we had planned on doing this live. Yeah. Uh, I like the live platform, but I want to, I think that um, you have to always be able to pivot. So we hopped on Zoom. So we'll see. We, I'm just excited to see what happens and see if uh, we get some people so we can deliver some information. Well, what I think is really important to recognize too is that in the times that we're at right now, it's just a really important time to utilize this extra time and create something that could be sustainable and help you financially, right? Yeah. And so even for people that don't have a business right now, but you have extra time, this is the perfect time to invest that time into yourself and create yeah. something. And what, what do you think that looks like? Um, well, for me right now, it looks a lot different than it would for other people, but I think back at myself one year ago, right? And if yeah. this were to happen, this would really look like me studying how to master my niche yeah. and me learning more marketing skills that will benefit me in the future, me practicing if, cause I wanted to enter the speaking arena, me practicing talking and setting up my YouTube channel, learning how to set up a YouTube channel. Yeah. And, um, and really spending my time investing it into myself, into my development. And I think that's what a lot of people don't recognize. It just takes time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited too. Like one of the things, one of the things that I want to work on more is using my free time to develop my skills. So like right now, right now is right now. Um, someone just tried to get on Zoom. They just text me. Um, um, sorry, right now, problems? uh, yeah, let me see what, uh, okay, yeah, see, let's see what's going on. um, yeah, I definitely want to develop my skills. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, like at this time, I kind of made a video on my strategy during these times, and I want to do like two parts. Like, I'm definitely gonna continue. Like, excuse me, I like video editing, and I like, um, but there's a software, so I use Premiere Pro. But there's another software called After Effects. I've never used it, but you can do cool like neon lights and just stuff you can't really do in Premiere. So it's one of my goals to learn like After Effects so that I can make cooler videos. I also have, um, I kind of want to reach out. I've already started reaching out to people about developing like how to work out at home, mm -hmm. how to, how to stay healthy without going to the gym. Um, I'm not big on nutrition. I'm, I have the worst diet ever. So I kind of focus on what I'm good at, but like, like moving safely in your own area. So I'm so I want to just develop things to just help people in these times and then and then build my audience over this time and then when things go back to normal then I'll have a bigger audience and then I could continue to add value aka help people reach their goals. So that's kind of my goal. Yeah. And then I just want to entertain. I think that that for like people like me and you are not big on we just had a conversation like how we're not big on watching TV at all. But I think that 80 to 90% of people are and so I want to start creating like super entertaining uh, media. Videos. Yeah, videos. And like I, I have like a character that I created. I was watching. I love, um, I do one of my guilty pleasures is like Key and Peele because you can watch like five minutes and just get a laugh in. But they're really good at like like costume humor. And so I just want to. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, so look up like I like, I almost want to do a screen share, but look up like Key and Peele. When you get a chance, I'll send you, if you remind me, okay. after, I'll send you a link. Key and Peele? He, yeah, uh, K-E-Y and Peele. It's the guy who, one of the, one of the guys of that show is who created the movie Get Out. Oh, and okay. He just, and he just released another movie. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but they're, they're big time. They're on Comedy Central. But the, they put on, like, why I like them is, like, they, like, they have the stupidest, like, two to three minute skits, but they'll have, like, wit.
always look different, but it's the same two guys. But like, it's two light skinned dudes. But sometimes they'll play white characters, black characters. Um, oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. So I just, you know, I want to entertain a lot more. Um, even how we made our. You're good at videos. it. You know how many compliments I got on that video. Yeah, that was a good. That was a. Honestly, a I got so many people that told me that they watched it several times because it was so funny. It's pretty funny. It's it's <laughs> it pretty much just looks makes you look really good. i'm gonna i'm going to so anybody i'm going to uh when i get time i'm going to make the blooper video you can there's some funny parts and oh my god still my funniest part is when you sit down and you just clear off Uh, i'm I'm really rough naturally yeah i'm gonna make i'm gonna make a blooper video I'm really not smooth. Like the video makes me look. I'm really. Yeah. That's just not even. <laughs> I'm gonna show the real you in the in the, uh, in the video. Hey, I wish boys. I could catch you drinking the water. But what are what are some of your what are some of your um? Your so videos? I wanted to talk today because I I know <clears throat> I was just trying to like jot down and brainstorm questions that I get asked often because yeah. that kind of gives me an idea of what people um are interested in learning about from me and I get asked often how I quit my job you know a lot a lot of single moms want to know how I did that how I'm continuing to do that I'm almost going on a year you know working for myself congratulations yeah thank you so I just kind of wanted to get into that first and then I wanted to talk about how to utilize LinkedIn to grow your business because that's really been a game changer for me I more money in two months than I did an entire year at work. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I just started messing with my LinkedIn. I changed my name. I made sure all my passcodes were right today. I told you I'd help it. you. I, I know. You, it, like, let's set a time up, sit down, and I'll help you. Yeah, no, I'm serious. I just started messing with it. I had, I, it was hard. Like, I know how to post on my phone, but I'm trying to learn how to navigate it and uh, make so it I a- have a guy that I hired on LinkedIn and he does all my um, reaching out for me because I just don't have the time anymore. So I'm learning how to like invest in outsourcing as much as I can. Yeah. So he does that um, reaching out for me, most of the reaching out on LinkedIn and we use sales navigator for that. Um, where we can filter the type of people that we want to see. So it's like all CEOs. Hello. It's hey, what's all- up, man? It's all CEOs. It's all uh, presidents of companies. Let me see if, well, they can just chat. Like they can send us questions, chat. Okay. Um, That's mini. Oh, okay. Hey. So we just do, I use the sales navigator. He uses the sales navigator for that. So like um, in January, we did 159 reach outs on LinkedIn and I was able to generate a lot of money with that. For sure. Yeah. And so it's really just about doing the work. And I think that's the mindset that you and I have that um, really makes us stand out in what we're doing. The fields that we're doing is like, we do the work. Yeah. There's no easy way around it. You have to do the work. So when people ask me, how did you quit your job? I did the work. Yeah. I, when I was at work, walking through the hallways at the law firm, I literally was on my phone building up my Instagram following. When I was in the restroom, I was on the phone reaching yeah. out to people. I was caught, like every three second I got, I implemented Tony Robbins strategy of net, no extra time. Like I was just constantly brainstorming, thinking of ideas from the time my kids went to sleep. I was working till like two o'clock in the morning. Like yeah. I was, it was like hard right but once I was able to get three big clients signed up with me um in one month I got three big contracts and it was enough income that would have been generate generated that would equal the amount that I was getting for my job yeah for the following four months and I was scary you know because I was getting paid ninety thousand dollars and great benefits and but I just quit I gave my wow. two week notice. Hi, and I walked What's off. Hi. What? what was that? Hello? Oh, I can't. Okay. Should we add? You want, let, let me have her join this video. Yeah. Yeah, I have everybody on video.
Then we'll see. I know what she said. That was. Oh. That was okay. So yeah, so I, I just took that chance because um, I believed in what I was doing. And you know, Wayne Dyer has this expression and I heard it just recently. It's not something that I heard before, but I wrote a poem saying the same thing that my future was whispering to me. Yeah. It was like a whisper that I can only see and I can only feel. And um, Wayne Dyer says that too, that you know, when you're aligned and you're doing something that you know is your purpose, you'll feel that whisper. Oh and yeah. It might not make sense to people and you'll take huge risks and you might look crazy. Sometimes yeah. it's necessary. I also realized at that time that I function so much better when my back is up against the wall. Like that's oh, wow. when I go hard, right? So yeah. now I purposely put myself in situations where my back is up against the wall by like investing a lot in myself or taking big risks. Yeah. I don't want to lose. Yeah. I, I, uh, I agree. I think that, that as far as like a whisper and speaking on business, I've always trusted in that little voice, even in, even in like the content that I create, a lot of times I'll just hear like quote unquote, a little whisper saying, Hey, why don't you create something like this? Or why don't you do this? Or, Hey, why don't you record this? Or, um, you know, Hey, you should do a pop-up or, Hey, you should, because I know that, I know that what my goal is overall, and that's, you know, there's like a lot of them, but my main goal is financial freedom so that I could literally just spend my time creating and helping people out in um in a healthy fashion you know i wish like i just sat down with um um kyle she's a straight talk diva and i was showing her how to create an email list and i was showing her how to set up on youtube and so in, even though you can make videos and things like that i feel like sometimes people have very specific questions awesome and so yeah the freaking funk the suction thing is on the fan i would um you might have to uh, mute Minnie's mic, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and then she can just uh, message. Um, and so, um, yeah, but you listen to, like, you listen to that that small voice, but I think... The second thing, as far as listening to that voice, and you said you seem crazy at times, I still, people don't think so, but I still get scared doing certain things. So oh, like, me too. Um, I, I seen you had a, a post, but, but about like, sometimes you just have to do it afraid. Mm -hmm. And that's been one of the keys to my success. Like, yo, like I put down, I'm sitting in, in, um, you know, this place is all beat up. I'm sitting in my development, my, my fix and flip. And I put up more money in this investment than I ever have. I wasn't, I don't know why I'm not really that scared. I, and I almost got scared through the coronavirus stuff, but I, I just, I just trust, I just vowed when I, I got baptized and not to make this like super spiritual, but when I got baptized, I just vowed to always trust in God's purpose in my life, whether it's good or bad. And so I just really trust in this purpose, but I still feel fear. But I act anyways, like even me and Shireen made, when we made that, that video at the Capitol Club, I was freaking out. I was like, we're just going to walk around here all in their place with the camera. Me and Shireen don't even have memberships there. <laughs> <laughs> she was there for a meeting, you know, and Ram Beer has a thing, but we were like, like, we did a video outside. We went, we into, we went into the boardroom. Yeah, we went into like the main boardroom. And we were just like, and then we like, I asked the girl, can she hold the camera for him? <laughs> you know, but it seemed like when you see the video, like, you know, it doesn't seem like Sheree's scared. And so, but I was freaking out. I don't tell anyone because I don't want anybody else to freak out. But I was see, like, oh. fear is an energy and you can harness that energy to like motivate you to want to do good. Yeah. Or you can let it paralyze you. It's yeah. one of the two, right? And so many people use that fear to paralyze themselves. They cut, start get, giving into that voice in their head, and they come up with excuses as to why they can't do stuff, and they choose to believe those excuses and then just make no action. Yeah. So, yeah, like when I quit my job, I was scared shitless. 
I was like, I was really scared. I, I remember the first Monday I woke up and I didn't have to go to work. I was like, oh my God, what did I just do? What did I do? <laughs> I was yeah. scared, you know, but I used that fear to like work through it. Oh, Oh, uh, that was me. I was just saying if she had Okay. Any. Yeah. So, um, so one of the other things I wanted to touch on is when I started working for myself, I realized that you have to do a lot of things for free. You have to do a lot of things for free with the intention of wanting to truly genuinely help and yeah. um, to really build your brand and make yourself stand out and become like a trustworthy source for people. And so um, I made it my sure. own to just really like earn people's trust by helping them. You know, yeah. that's really what I wanted to do. And by doing that, I started gaining more and more um, people that were listening to what I was saying because they saw that I genuinely just wanted to help. Yeah, I know. I agree. I, I had a guy here. I had a guy here yesterday. Um, I'm working on finding investors for my business. Um, it's one of the things that I don't really know how to do. And so I'm like a lot of the videos that I make are to find investors and find people who are interested in real estate so that I could build a team of people. Eventually I want to do it on a bigger scale and build like a syndication so I can build huge properties. But for now, um, but I'm getting off topic, but I have my buddy over here that I had reached out to and he wanted to find out some more. And so I'm just trying to learn with my friends how to, how to, um, pitch sales and, and pitch different things, which, you know, is a side topic. You need to practice your craft. But the point is, is this kid was very smart. His name's Cola. And he reminded me of myself because he came, he asked his questions. He told me kind of how much he had and we had a conversation, but he did something that I thought was very wise. He said, Hey, I can, I can take it. And so I was like, um, I was like, he was like, if you need help, even if it's sweeping, I will come and work for free. Oh, I will wow. come and help you out. for free. Um, If we're doing yard work, he was like, whatever it is, if you're here on the weekends, give me a heads up and I'll come by. I'll stop by. And, and so he took advantage of one of the principles that I truly believe in. And that is what you just said is working for free because that's how I was able to, even this deal, it's, uh, it's I'm going to pivot just a little bit. But even this deal I, I got from not necessarily just working for free, but connecting and aligning yourself and paying for, like, one of the things that I do, how I got this real estate deal is through my friend Wendell. Years ago, because I seen he was successful, he owned the restaurant that I worked at, he owned his own real estate company, and he was a lawyer. He obviously had more money than me. I was a, a bartender at a, at a restaurant and I had my t-shirt business, but that was no, like I couldn't buy a restaurant and have my own real estate practice. So what I did was, is I said, Hey, I see you're successful. Can I bring you lunch? And I would bring him, I brought, I would bring him like, he always, he just loves Togo's. And so I would just always bring him Togo sandwiches and pick his brain. And this is three, this has to be at least three years ago. And I would, I would, what's that? Um, this was at least three years ago. And so I would pick his brain and, and fast forward a few years forward. He's the person that actually helped me get me, help me. Um, um, he was actually the person that, that helped me build, that helped me get this deal. And it was from buying him lunch. And I always tell the same story. I got my job at Avery Lounge where I'm the bar manager now. And who knows how much money I've made from that place. We threw an event there. We've done, I've thrown two events there on top of, you know, making money um, for the last three years. But how I got that job is I took the owner who at the time owned like 10 restaurants who obviously had access to food. But I said, hey, I see you're doing these projects can I bring you something to eat? And he actually had, he was building the place and he had uh, like, like eight, six to eight um, workers there, like general contractors and, and just laborers there. And I actually, he was like, I'm here with them. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to bring everybody food. And I just bought everybody food. I went to Togo's again. That's my secret weapon is Togo's, I guess. And I got like a huge six foot sandwich. I got sodas and chips for everyone. Obviously they were super appreciative. And then me and him, he showed me around the spot. And at the end of the conversation, it's like, hey, you want a job here? But I don't know if we would have oh, ever had that. That's cool. 
you know, that's how I got the job at Avery Lounge. And oh, so I don't know. Kids are here. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, so yeah, I didn't know you got your job like that. Yeah. So that's how I got my job at Avery Lounge. Wow. Um, and then from having that job at Avery Lounge, the door girl at Avery Lounge is the girl who got me my job at Google. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if I would have never bought that Togo sandwich, I might not have had the job at Avery or the job at Google. And so, but the point is, is like... The point like, is, is to invest your in time into I'll yourself, you know? Yeah. Invest and like be intentional with it. <clears throat> Last year I spoke at 12 different. Oh no, let me see. How did you weigh your options in terms of covering your family expenses before making the decision to leave your job and become a place to how you took step before making large investment risks? Um, so honestly, I just took a huge risk and I quit. I was saying because I just really felt like it was the right thing for me to do. Um, I didn't really weigh my options. I just told myself I have no other choice because at the time, Minnie, I was um, commuting three hours a day. By the time I got home, um, I it was like seven and I only got to spend probably two hours with my children and I was stressed out from the time I got up to the time I went to bed and I was trying to build my business. Um, I remember one morning, oh my gosh, I'll never forget this morning, morning, one morning I was running late and there was, I saw that there was an accident on the 280. I was all freaked out and stressed out. I hurried up and got my son ready, got my daughter ready, dropped my daughter off at daycare, went like rushed through the school, dropped my son off and I'm on the freeway and my roommate calls me and she's like, Shereen, did you realize that there was no school today? I'm like, what do you mean there was no school? She's like, some stranger just brought Stephen home from school. He was standing outside the school. That's where my mind was at. Like, that's when I realized this has to stop. I can't do this anymore. Like, I'm literally, yeah, I literally left my son outside of an empty school and drove off. Yeah, yeah. I, I was so, I was like, literally, no, I was so, that's where I was at. I was just stressed out. Like, so that happened on Monday and I put my notice in on Wednesday. I had the clients already wow. signed up. Yeah. I was going to wait like three or four more months to kind of save the income. Um, but then I just put my notice in and I quit because I, I realized, you know, this is just not right. This is not safe. And if it doesn't work out, if these clients do fail, I always have the skill set where I can get another job. So I just kind of figured yeah. things out as I went because, um, my peace and just being present with my kids was just way more important than anything else. And I trusted in my abilities. For sure. For sure. I, uh, I, so the second it says, um, same question applies to how do you how do you took the step before making large investment risks? Do you believe successful entrepreneurs do the due diligence before starting their business in order to minimize the risk involved yeah, for in the sure. new project? So that, that word to me, risk, is risk is like I have like a picture. It would say risk, and then it would say equal sign is not not knowing. If the only deals that are risky. taking action. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, and not taking action is like the, probably the biggest risk. But risks comes from not knowing, and you can't know unless you do, which mm -hmm. is action. So for me to do this real estate deal, I have I've already done so many micro deals that I kind of know what to look for. So for all deals are like, like the first thing you want to know is like how much the deal is gonna like cost, and then it's like okay, like fine, I like I do a lot of short orders, so I I just I'm doing sticker a sticker order, so I'll just go over like a sticker order real quick. So my buddy calls me. He says, hey, 
I want some stickers. I want my uh, I want uh, my face on them, and I want them to have a, a phrase underneath. I said, okay. So I looked. How much are the stickers going to cost? How much is it going to cost my artist? And we'll say I think it costs like sixty bucks. So the, I know that I have to do a I have to do like a um uh, I add at least thirty percent. So I think that's I don't know. I'm not going to do the math right now. But after it's all said and done, I have to charge him. I think I charged him 120. But I, I think I did a 50 percent uh, profit margin on that. So, so now I know. Okay, the project cost me 60. I'm I'm going to get back 120. So I understand that on a deal, and then I know what he's going to already ask. Like, when is it going to be done? So I already know what to tell people before they even ask. Like, hey, your artwork's ready tomorrow. Stickers take about three days after approved. Um, after you approve the artwork. And then I'll drop it off myself. So his questions are answered. And so from doing small deals, now I, the house is like, it's a big project, but the, it's all the same. Hey, how much is it going to cost for us to fix, to buy the house, which is like the stickers? How much is it going to cost for me to just buy the stickers? How much is it going to cost for me to, like, my artist would be like, to fix it up, make it look how I want. And then Do it's like, how much you incorporate your time into it? that too? What's that? Do you incorporate the cost of your time? For it, like if there's I a bigger do, project, I do incorporate. I I I don't say like, oh, my time's worth this or worth yeah. that because I'm in a position to where as long as I'm at the house right now and like they're only I'm, I'm they're just having me doing like sweeping. I can do mudding. Like I can do low low risk tasks. I can't do like electrical, but it's the 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 my time to be here versus my knowledge. Um my knowledge is so huge. Like yeah. even if I was worth a hundred dollars an hour, like the knowledge that I'm making here is probably worth $10,000 an hour. So one thing you know? that many asked too was, um, well, how, how did you take steps before invest making large risks investments? And one thing I know is like an investment for me was like this year joining a mastermind group every month with my coach and because it's like you know it's not cheap and it's something you have to pay every single month so but she has proof with the people that she's helped generate incomes with with her strategies so I think that that's really important too when you're investing in something towards self-development not just like an asset but with something with self-development to make sure that the people don't just sound good but they have proof to back up what they're doing you know, because a lot of people make the mistake of giving somebody a large amount of money because they say something that sounds good, but they haven't proven that it actually works. So I think it's really important to do that. And then the other thing that she asked was, one thing do you wish you avoided during this big life, career, and finance? Yes. Yeah. So what I was saying um, last year, I spoke at 12 different places um, all over the United States. And one thing that I learned was I wish that I would have been more patient with myself in scheduling speaking gigs. I was so anxious just to go speak and be a speaker. I invested in a lot of money just traveling. Like I flew to Florida just for one day to speak at this event. And that flying to Florida and then getting in the hotel room, that alone, like it's I didn't have to give myself any time to practice, to rest, nothing. So I wish I would have just been a little bit more patient and um, entering the speaking arena and really learning how it works before just jumping in like full throttle and investing a lot of money into doing that. You know, and so I think that's um, important too, is just like be patient and talk to people, like how you have conversations with people about real estate, like have conversations with people that are doing the things that you want to do. Yeah, I would say like, how, you know, as far as like minimizing risk is, I think you hit it on the head is like a track record. Like my business partners have flipped five homes. I literally walked through one of their homes. I talked to their business partner who oversees the deals. I asked them, where did you guys fail? And where did you guys win? Um, and, but I don't, the only mistake, like when it comes to business or investing, like even how you flew to Florida, like, I count that as still a win because oh, at least it was. You know, that's how you learn. Like, yeah. like even though it costs you money, like I think like, even many, I tell her like, that's, that's your tuition cost. The only mistakes that I do not 
like, and even now later in life are personal or things that, that have nothing to do with business, like that destroy my character and destroy mm -hmm. me. And so like excessive, excessive, like all in all transparency, like excessive drinking or doing drugs or, or things like that are the only, only decision that decisions that I regret too. And like, I, I still kind of trust the process, but I feel like, like that's time you can't get back. Like if you go and you, unless it's like a celebration, it's, you know, you've released a book, like, yeah, like champagne and things like that. But if it's just like, like a Tuesday night and you're just smoking some weed and just watching, mm -hmm. and, you know, binge watching something, if that's what you want to do in life, then fine. But if you want to be like this powerful speaker, a real estate developer, a good mom, you, it's it, like, you kind of have to decide like, is that what you want to do? And so the only time because it that all comes with I, sacrifice. It does. There's sacrifices you have to make, but those are the only type of mistakes that I feel bad about. Like if I spend, if I go out um, and I spend like do something stupid, and I spend a hundred bucks, even though it's a hundred bucks and I have a hundred bucks somewhere else. I'm like, I'm like, man, that's something that I could have invested or made a company better, or I could have got advertising with that, or I could have done something wiser with that. So really just unwise decisions are the only thing I regret. But like, if I come in this house and like I accidentally like short a circuit or something that cost me a hundred bucks, I, cause that's a lesson. But if I just do like things that aren't in line, like that don't, <laughs> that don't talk to that whisper, that's the only time that I re regret stuff. And then to like, I think she said, can you share one of the, that's the only mistake. Um, wish you could avoid it during these big life career and financial decisions in your life. How did you handle adversity and doubt? I think the only way to handle adversity is to, I, I, I think that it's adversity and doubt. The only way that I personally handle it is, and, and many already knows I say this all the time, but I truly, truly trust the process. And sometimes, you know, uh, maybe I shouldn't go a lot public, but um, someone, Shireen, like heard someone that I know yell at me and she does not like this person. And so, and so, but that person is, is quote unquote, like an adversary in my life. But that person also makes me a lot tougher because before that person, no one really pushes me. This person pushes me a lot. And so how I handle that is I look at it instead of being like, oh, why is this guy pushing me? I have a, like, I prayed and I meditated. And what I heard is never let no one separate you from your money. Yeah. And, you know, and so like, I could be, I could, you know. Well me from the outside I always um I always not judge people but I look at people how they treat other people yeah. how you treat the janitor how you treat the waiter how you treat your employee that's yeah. to me who you are as a person so when I see another person just because they have some authority or they have some money to back them up and they're treating yeah. people like downgrading them or treating them a certain way it just yeah. really like I look at you different yeah, and I, so I look for me, like, for me, I look at it as, like, I do understand what you're saying, but, like, that wall right there was probably paid for by me working there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so I just, I, I just get convert. It. No, you I just, just have the right mindset about it. You do. Yeah, I just convert all that energy and, and quote unquote negativity and all that doubt. I just try to convert all of that into, like, like change and positive. Mm -hmm. And then fuel. For me, when I get into that position, like, hey, I don't like when people, like, it's kind of unnecessary for me to talk to someone like that. Um, unless, you know, I, I tell people, but I won't be that type of person. I won't be that type of person. So. Yeah, you know. Sorry. It's all good. How are your kids doing? They just woke up from their nap. Tell them come say hi. <laughs> Another in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's and then and when it comes to investing, um I I just handle it as you have to the more I know, the less riskier it is. Like there's certain investments I don't like to make, and there's certain due diligence that I do. And so I say, like, okay, if I was to lose all this money would the lesson be worth it? And sometimes the answer, if the answer is yes, then I'll take the risk. 
like investing in stocks. Like, like I just wanted to know, like, okay, what does this mean? And sometimes I was telling my buddies, sometimes you don't, without taking that risk or taking that action, you don't really know what's going to happen and you can't really learn. I would say my first, so I had two portfolios. I had one, I had one, um, like an E-Trade, which I invested in my business and I did completely different stocks. And I had a Robin Hood, which I did completely different stocks. My Robin Hood account was down for a long time, for maybe even like six months. I was in the, you know, uh, quote unquote, like the red, but my E-Trade was in the green most of the time. But I was never investing for it to go up or down. I was investing in it for the dividends. And, and as that, but then when the market started to go up, my portfolio eventually hit the green and then did really well afterwards. But those lessons of it being in the red, I, I got to see reports of, okay, why is this stock going down? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? So now without even investing in stocks, I could hear news or see what's going on. Like for me, once Apple closed, my thought wasn't like, damn, Apple's closed coronavirus. I was like, damn, they're probably going to be losing, quote unquote, you know, they're going to be losing millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars. But the catch is I might want to buy Apple stock right now because that, that retail chain, they have enough money Disneyland to, stock. <laughs> yes, Disneyland's going down. Um, all these stocks are going down. But it's, we know one thing that like two things, I, my theory is two things are going to happen. The world's going to end or we're going to rebound. And so if the world ends, who cares if I have the stock? The world's over. But if the world rebounds, Disneyland's going to reopen. Uh, I have stocks in Starbucks is going to reopen. Apple's going to reopen. All of these things, all these consoles are going to reopen. So I, if I have the money and I just do like, like I told you, I just did that sticker deal. If I made 60 bucks, I'm going to take $6 right now and I'm going to put it in the stock market. And once I have enough, I'm going to buy an Apple stock. I'm going to buy a Disney stock. I'm going to buy these stocks because, yeah, it might go down a little bit more and it might show red in the investment, but I'm waiting, I'm waiting and holding on until after all of this stuff happens because we know right on, on right when this thing, the governor says, hey, you know what, we found a little cure or the state, like you guys can go out. <laughs> Your internet connection, you're cutting off. What's that? You're you're cutting off. Oh, okay. It might be my um, um but we could, you know, we yeah. could probably wrap up in the next couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, but so, so that's how I kind of gauge it. But it, if I never took, if I never bought a stock, I wouldn't understand these principles. And I wouldn't understand like, it almost becomes just like I said, with real estate it becomes a language to where if I would have never bought in this home, now I already kind of know, like when I'm in neighborhoods, I see like old houses and I'm like, damn, I'm going to bitch. Like I could buy this house right now, fix it up. Because this is uh, one of the things that I was taught is buy the worst house in the best neighborhood. So sometimes like, like I was driving through like, like San, like San Leandro or Walnut Creek or all these other areas. And I see little houses that are like kind of run down, but the neighborhood's amazing. And so I know that, okay, all I would have to do is either door knock or I know that how to like go on realtor.com. I know how to put it in offers. I know that if I get the house, what's going to happen next? Like, but it wasn't until I put my money down that I really got to learn those things. So that's how I kind of beat doubt is because by investing and taking action, it leads to knowledge. And knowledge is people are so focused on the money, but the knowledge is much more important than the money to yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. And um, one thing I just want to really emphasize too with people that have a service business, like for me, right? Like writing books. Or even for you, if you really to get on LinkedIn with your with your shirt business, your shirt printing business, is that if you're going to get on LinkedIn to really invest in the sales navigator, it's $79.99 a month. It's worth it because you can use the sales navigator to filter out the people that it shows you. So if you want to just see CEOs and presidents and people that have companies with 50 or more employees, it will show you those people. So then you could start filtering them out by area. So, okay, you only want to see the people that live in Silicon Valley that are in those positions. And then you can inbox them 
with the, your template, you build a template for whatever you're going to send them and get them on a phone call and have, you know, if they don't respond, follow up with them. And that's how I've really been growing my business. So I told you in January, we did 159 reach outs this month. My goal is to reach out to 300 people. And that's how I'm growing my business. And I met this other guy who was a board member uh, for B, B Daring. Um, I spoke with him last year and he grew a million dollar company through LinkedIn, just reaching out by himself. Wow. Yeah. I, I, uh, like, um, I did, uh, some video work for Lena and for, um, Kyle and they, they took me to lunch after and Lena was just like, Lena's just kind of been on me. So like, I need to use it. And she's like, you need to get more professional. She's like, you need to learn how to get good, big contracts. You need to learn how to brand yourself because, you know, you guys keep saying something like, that's probably my next, my next big thing is, and it's like listening to advice and taking action on advice, but learning how to go from like, like if I'm doing, you know, 50 stickers making, you know, how can I get to doing a thousand, you know, how can I get these bigger contracts? Because like buses, they need stickers that just so say one, one plus thing I could see you doing you know? on LinkedIn, JD, is once you, what's really important is to sh search, like showcasing your expertise. And the way you can do that is by writing articles and blogs on LinkedIn that's that show on your page so I could see you writing an article about all these different topics that you have just discussed right like how you started your shirt business how your investments have led to bigger invest like just like all these little things um and people actually read them it's crazy like you hashtag it people do read these articles like I had this woman just message me today on LinkedIn that read it, an article I wrote like five months ago and she messaged me about it randomly I was like oh wow like you know, people do actually like read these things on LinkedIn because everybody that's on LinkedIn are in the professional world and they're there really wanting to like enhance their skills and connect with other professional minded people. So it's like all with the same intention. For sure. Yeah. I, I, I I'm, I'm, I, like I said, I literally, today, I took time to start, I, I watched like a five minute video, it was, too, it was like too cheesy, so I didn't finish watching it, I should have, um, I like to kind of finish what I, what I start, but, um, and it, it was helpful, but I, I started watching videos on LinkedIn, which is another thing um, that, you I know, met Nia through LinkedIn. to minimize risk, and uh, what's that, I, met I still Nia. have, um, Nia, you know, Nia, oh wow, yeah. I met her through LinkedIn. Oh, wow. That's yeah. crazy. So I've met, so, I made some really good relationships through LinkedIn. You want to hear something funny about me doing this, about me doing this um, thing is, and trying to do more live events, is me me something. Your internet, uh, you're like uh, cutting out. I keep creating the space. Yeah, I'm going to get off. It's because I'm on my phone. It keeps kind of saying it's unstable. But Nia, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but Nia told me to start creating spaces for people to be able to come together. And so that's why I did the pop-up, and it's from Nia. And so if you would have never been on LinkedIn, it's funny, all these connections, then I would have never met Nia. So then, like, Nia low-key made this Zoom happen, you know? Mm -hmm. So or you made it happen because you went on the – like, so – I love Nia. She changed my life. Yeah. So she's, she, yeah, she definitely, I sat down with her and she gave me, you know, some good tidbits and she actually, she actually like, like I was freaking out like about one of my, but we're not going to go into all I that. I know. You told me about Nia, that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Nia is super, super powerful. I'm glad I met her. Um, and hopefully, you know, with everything slowing down, we'll have more time to connect. With you. I think you, Nia, we all been super busy yeah. building these brands. But I just, I just say, just if anybody listening, just continue to learn, to continue to grow. Um, uh, that's it, and take action. And, and to be, and be intentional to fail. with your time. Any failure are the seeds of success. Today I was driving around. Yes. What do you mean by that? I mean, don't, yeah, don't be intentional with your time. This extra, like a lot of us have more extra time because we're home with our families, yeah. you know, and if, 
don't just spend it aimlessly scrolling through your phone and watching TV, like create something, you know, if you, for me, like my message with my business is sharing is an integral part of healing. I'm really challenging people and encouraging people to take this time because a lot of people have difficulty being alone. I mean, this is actually giving people anxiety, having to stay home just like with themselves, with their thoughts. And I think that's like a perfect time to really reflect and work on yourself. Self-development is really the key to like finding your purpose and really getting a new circle of friends and really learning how to build a business. It's really through self-development. For sure. Well, I just want to thank you for coming on here, um, just doing this little pop-up. We'll uh, continue to, yes. you know, maybe we'll we'll continue to do. Um, let's try to just do the success of the best revenge. Maybe keep I the think, same I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like May June. I think that's when things okay. will be better. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we have to set a date right yeah. now, but maybe we can do another Zoom on the day that we kind of had planned. We'll do the. We'll just do a, a Zoom that day. Um, get Ram beer on here, and yeah. then just really keep pushing that date. Um, I might do like independently might do one or two. I'll let you know if you do some zoom, but I want to get, try to get people um, start using this platform a lot more over the next month or two and just try to start getting at least, you know, one or two people more comfortable. Cause like, you know what they say? I, I think it's not just with money, but when someone buys from you, it's easier for them to buy a second time. So I want to start getting, I don't think like, I know for sure, like my audience doesn't use zoom. Um, I don't even understand zoom. They understand FaceTime and different things. So I want to start getting people that that want coaching or anything on Zoom and, and get this so that by the time we do success is the best we oh, can. Oh, wow. You know, I didn't know that. Is, um, people are comfortable hopping on here and, and have already know how to do it so that- I thought everybody can, used you know, Zoom. No, they don't. A lot of people don't even know what it is. Oh, it's wow. not. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I think for- you know, I'm, like I said, I'm less, I'm, I'm coming from like a bartender, um, you know, quote unquote, like street world where a lot of people don't understand these technologies. A lot of people that I mess with are just now getting into like personal development. Um, I just, I come from a completely different group. So this version and like my network now has completely changed in the last year or two, but before I, with my time and resources but uh you know some of the people that i interact with do not know how to use them or have never done it before so i'm gonna change that okay well you you're talking in slow motion it looks like on here okay. on end. well we can just shut it down <laughs> all right um send me the recording i'll text I you thank you Minnie, for coming on and asking yeah, thank questions. you Minnie. Really thank you for supporting cool. Have a uh, blessed, blessed. Day. Okay. Bye. Always. And everyone, uh, everyone listening, thank you. Bye. Bye, Minnie.